Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a sports betting site, keeping it free, .blogspot.com, a financial blog I run that's gotten a number of views, more than a million views. Today is April the 30th, 2020. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I've noticed, I'll make a boxing video, and some people will then say, hey Dwyer, tell us your views on Bitcoin. They know that I've been here online talking about crypto for five years or so, right? They know, they sense I have another life. Well, let's talk about investment strategy, at least what I'm pursuing. You need to follow your own ideas, but I'm just going to share with you what I'm looking at right now. Just some big themes. I'm not going to get into too much detail. But I do feel that there's some information out there that people can profit on big time. So let me say, Square right now hasn't publicized it enough. I view Square as an outfit that prefers to have word of mouth establish the credibility of their product. But Square is ahead of Robinhood in terms of offering you the ability to buy portions of shares of companies, right? So right now on the Square Cash app, which you can get on the Google Play Store, and I, full disclosure, um, I'm not paid by Square. I do think the company's cutting edge, and I do own shares of Square, right? Full disclosure, when I see a company that impresses me, I try to own a part of it. Well, Square right now allows you, off of its cash app, which is on the Google Play Store, to do things like buying parts of shares of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, that's far more than an insurance company, right? Understand, I know when you think Berkshire Hathaway, you're thinking of Geico and things like that. But Berkshire Hathaway also has a significant share of Apple. They have a significant share of the company that owns Sirius XM, right? They own shares of Coke, right? They own shares of... Southwest Airlines. I believe Warren Buffett has done a great job of picking and choosing companies to put in his diversified portfolio, which is the Berkshire Hathaway stock. And Buffett also is sitting on a huge amount of cash, right? Over a hundred million dollars. Right? A lot of cash that he can put to work buying companies and things like that. Hundred billion dollars, excuse me. You research the cash load yourself. But let's just say Berkshire Hathaway is extremely well positioned right now. So, I'm doing things on Square. Just telling you what I'm doing. Where I'm looking at great companies. Amazon, for example. Great companies. And I'm spending some money buying fractions of their shares. Right? Well, let's uh, more importantly talk about the themes I'm pursuing. I believe this is really what you know is a bit unique compared to many. Right? One of the biggest themes I'm pursuing is the concept of sound money. Cryptocurrency and precious metals. Right? When I say precious metals, I'm talking about gold, silver, copper. Well, let's talk about crypto first. Now, I know there are Bitcoin maximalists out there. You have a genius operating in broad daylight. I consider him a genius. He's also a Bitcoin maximalist. His name's Max Kaiser. And with his wife, Stacy Herbert, who's also brilliant, 
Max has been talking about Bitcoin for years. Had you followed Max's advice, you would be a Bitcoin millionaire several times over. Right? He's been talking about Bitcoin when Bitcoin was well below a thousand dollars a Bitcoin. Right? Well, let me just say, while I believe in Bitcoin, while I own some Bitcoin, I think that altcoins offer significant value. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. Right? Trace Mayer, another guy I consider brilliant, Bitcoin maximalist. I actually think that crypto is an ecosystem that's going to have several long-term successes. I believe that the key number you need to look at is not the price of Bitcoin. If you're on CoinMarketCap.com, one of the better sites, what I want you to do instead is to look at the total market cap of cryptocurrency. Understand, I know Bitcoin right now is about 65% of that total market cap. I expect that number to drop. And understand, I'm extremely bullish on Bitcoin. I'm one of those people who, like Raul Paul of Real Vision, believes Bitcoin is going to get into the six figures. Right? But, I also believe that there's an ecosystem. Some of the coins, dare I say it, do what Bitcoin does better than Bitcoin. So what I want you to do, and I'm going to give a nod here to Matt McCall. Look him up, who's on InvestorPlace.com. He talks about cryptocurrencies as really being software programs operating on an operating system that we call the blockchain. Not all of them are intended to be currency. Not all of them are intended to be something I give the cashier to get the cup of coffee at Starbucks. Rather, some of them are really there to support the system and to provide you with additional benefits. Now, I'm just going to name at first, some coins I own, right? I personally believe, as I have said here for years, that the best play in the crypto sphere, to me, is to buy Dash. Dash has the best governance, in my opinion, right? The best governance. Dash also is doing groundbreaking stuff where they're buying shares of other companies, right? They have uh, a group of elected representatives who vote on whether Dash should invest. Some of the vendors who've come to Dash saying, hey, we're, we're working on this product for Dash, right? Rather than Dash fund those vendors and just hope the vendor delivers. Dash instead is saying, hey, give us an equity stake. We'll pay you for it. In my opinion, Dash is the closest thing to a venture capital fund in the crypto sphere. And let's be clear here. In terms of being used for money, while Bitcoin has a clear hash rate advantage, in other words, it's very hard to hack Bitcoin, right? Just understand that Dash allows really instantaneous transactions. Some of the fastest transactions in the entire crypto sphere, right? Dash's wallet is extremely easy to use. That's why Dash has taken off in places like Venezuela and Argentina. So, in addition to Dash, I own, and I know Max Kaiser doesn't like this crypto. That's why you need to look into things yourself. I own Bitcoin Cash. Folks, it's faster than Bitcoin. I've done transactions in both. Right? Pivx. I know you're on the first page of 
CoinMarketCap.com and you don't see PIVX. I'm just telling you some of the best ideas in crypto. Some of the best technology in crypto is outside of the top 100 cryptos in terms of market space. I've owned PIVX for years. I can tell you that PIVX's wallet is mind-blowing. PIVX also allows for a greater degree of anonymity than Dash. It's easier to use than Monero, which I also own. Right? If you're into privacy, right, as I am, Pivx, Horizon, Monero, those are cryptos that I'm into. Right? But understand, since we're talking about an ecosystem, just like when you go to the bank, you understand that there are things going on behind the scenes. That banks are making deals with other banks to make sure that both banks have liquidity. That there's information gathering, there's the sharing of interest rate information and things like that that make the banks work. This is with fiat currency. Well, the crypto sphere is not different. So you have some coins that to me are well positioned with great technology that are making the whole thing work that I think are worth the investment. Understand. I'm just interested in making a profit. Right? The way you make a profit is by investing in things that are useful, that people need. So I don't believe Bitcoin by itself is going to explode and all these all these other altcoins will go to zero. Right? I don't believe that the only coins you should look at are the coins involved in use as a currency. I think they're coins behind the scenes like Chainlink, a pricing protocol, an information aggregator that are going to continue to do well. Full disclosure, I own some Chainlink. Kyber, same type thing. I believe that right now we're in a centralized crypto exchange world. You have to see ahead, right? Don't invest just based on today. Invest on based on two years from now. You're going to have a lot of decentralized exchanges. That's where Kyber shines, right? I own some Kyber. Another coin that I've owned at different times in the past doing transactions is owned by one of the best exchanges out there. Binance has an exchange, right? Both globally and Binance.us. When you're on Binance, and if you're trying to trade one coin for another coin, and some of these coins are not on the first page of CoinMarketCap.com, and they might not have big markets, and you need to exchange Bitcoin for some coin that you can then exchange for some other coin, Binance coin is a lifesaver. If you believe that cryptocurrency is going to take off, then understand, you know, if you believe that Binance, as I do, is one of the best places to buy and to transfer cryptocurrency, then Binance coin, which you can buy, has a very bright future. Let's talk about some other coins. You're not going to find better on-chain governance. The ability for a crypto to have a vote of its members and then, based on what that vote tells them, change the chain instantaneously. Right? In the fiat world, it would be like Chase saying, hey, we're thinking about offering a certain kind of account. What do you, our customers, think? Then the customers vote, people vote. Then the customers say, yes, we want that account. Then Chase says, okay, great. We'll start offering that account in six weeks. 
Well, with Tezos, they can do it instantaneously. Right? Other coins that are fascinating, Ziliqua. If you want speed, if you want a very efficient blockchain, one with what's called sharding, this could be the coin for you. Let's get really crazy. Let's pick a coin that is very high tech, very high tech, but isn't even in the top 600 in terms of market cap of cryptocurrencies that I think if people just discovered the coin, if people started using the coin, they would say, my God, this coin offers an elite level of confidentiality. And that's DAPS, D-A-P-S. Right now, this is really for the speculators out there, not the investors. You're just looking for the gorgeous woman in the room that somehow no one is noticing at the beauty contest. Right? That's DAPS. Let me say this about gold and silver. We know that there's chicanery going on in the space. You can't buy gold and you can't buy silver at spot prices. Where I buy gold and silver, think about it. I go to the site, I'm prepared to pay spot plus a reasonable premium. You know, it doesn't have to be issued by the U.S. Mint. You know what? I trust Canada. I'll take a maple leaf. Give me a Canadian coin, right? You know, hell, I'll take a Cougaran. Just give me a credible coin in the precious metal. And you can't get those coins today within eight or nine dollars of the spot price. So what that tells me is that these prices are illusory. Gold and silver are such screaming buys that you can't get them close to the spot price. This would be like you hearing that gas is at an all-time low, and then when you go to your gas station, they're offering you a gallon at like $8 a gallon. And you're like, whoa, wait a moment. I thought, I thought gas was on sale here. I thought I'm supposed to hear that, you know, silver's going off at a little bit above $15 an ounce spot price. Why can't I pay $16 or $17? And that's when they start giving you a long-winded story. That's the story right now in the precious metal space. Let me just say this. You have mining stocks sitting there that you can invest in. Now, I believe the stock market is going to have major stresses. I don't believe in a V-shaped recovery. I think you're looking at years of below par economic growth. I think the stock market is going to drop from where it is here. Why? Because that's been the history of depressions. They're trying to tell you it's a recession, then you're hearing that 50 million people are unemployed. Who are they kidding? You knew before this corona crisis that if they ever told you that 50 million people were unemployed, you understood, wow, that's, that's a depression. Right? If they told you the hotel sector is having problems, the airline sector is having problems, the restaurant sector is having problems, at what point do you say, wow, that's a depression? I believe we're in a depression. I don't believe we come out of it for, if we're lucky, the next 18 months. If we're unlucky, it could take years. So when I'm looking at gold and silver stocks, I like established gold mining royalty stocks, right? The Franco Nevada model has been copied throughout the industry, right? Try to find gold and silver miners who have interests in many mines that have dollar swap agreements with the Federal Reserve. Right? 
you want to take a look at those because understand these royalty stocks they don't have to pay any more money to collect on the royalty they've bought the royalty the mines proven to be successful now they're just collecting the profits there's going to be a lot of struggle and strife around the world during this depression right just understand that these royalty companies are better diversified they have royalties in different mines in different locations they're more diversified than the operator of a gold mine in let's say some part of the world that has political strife let's talk about the general state of the world here before I get to some other big themes right I just want people to understand you know we're at a stage right now where we're coming out of the bomb shelter after the war and we're gonna walk through the city and we're gonna look at all the bombed out areas of the economy right the people in power have a lot of propaganda they want you to believe that that stimulus check is going to restore your standard of living that price levels are going to magically go back to where they were before the lockdown and make no mistake a depression was coming stocks were historically overvalued debt was at record levels we had negative yielding sovereign debt in more than one country <laughs> before the coronavirus right so I want people to understand that many businesses are not going to reopen this is one man's opinion right I'm just telling you what I think many businesses are not going to reopen you could have been employee of the month in January your supervisors could have loved your work you could have been well thought of you could have had a several year run at the company the problem is that company might no longer exist the people you work with might themselves be sending out resumes right all that company is at this point is a line on your resume let me just say too technology will wipe out many jobs right there's some patrons at the restaurant who were there for the food who now because of the lockdown realize that they could have the food delivered to them by github or doordash the prevailing thought it's up to you whether it's propaganda that this coronavirus is dangerous and that it's out there killing huge numbers of people is going to scare a lot of people who even like the location of the restaurant from going to the restaurant you can't tell people that they need to wear a mask for months and then suddenly say okay guess what the lockdown's over let's go back to life as usual who's gonna reach for the peanut bowl now at the bar if the waiter or waitress is sniffling what are you gonna think before you order your food you're gonna have decreased demand also people you believe in people you trust people who've done things the right way or at least what we thought was the right way they're gonna lose a huge portion of their savings home equity a lot of it's already been lost right when you see a lot of people who are unemployed when you have a credit crisis when credit lines are evaporating when billionaires like Richard Branson are going around begging the British government the Australian government for money to bail out his airlines when you're in that environment guess what the credit leveraged real estate market is gonna take a hit also pensions 
You know, I don't even talk to my friends about their pensions. I try to keep off that subject. States are in trouble, folks. You have the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, talking about allowing states to declare bankruptcy. You have some states, Illinois, openly asking for bailouts. Folks, if the stock market swoons, if we're in a depression, if the money's not there, 